about science. Though Quran is not a book of science, S C I E N C E, it's a book of signs, S I G N S. And there are more than 6,000 signs, ayats in the glorious Quran, out of which more than a thousand speak about signs. Those of you who have heard my talk, I've given the talk on Quran and modern science, compatible or incompatible. Or Quran and modern science, conflict or conciliation, which proves, alhamdulillah, that the Quran is far superior to science. So with the help of using the yardstick of the Westerners, we can prove our yardstick, which is Quran, which is far superior than science, has mentioned what they have discovered today, 1400 years ago. Since they advanced in the field of science and technology, and if we speak with them, with Hikmah, Alhamdulillah, they realize that Quran is far superior to science, and many of them come to Islam. Thirdly, Alhamdulillah, the Westerners, they like to reason out. They won't just accept anything on face value. They will reason out, they will investigate, and then only will they be convinced. They are not a group of people who believe in superstition, most of them. Neither do they adhere to blind beliefs. And that's exactly what the Quran says. And Quran shows the technique how to dawah in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 125, which says, ila sabili hasna, billati asan. That is, invite all to the way of thy Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue with them and reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. Quran always encourages reasoning. No one of the Quran says in several places, including Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 242, so that you may understand. The Quran wants the people to understand the Quran and then accept it. The Quran says in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 52, that here is a message for the humankind. Let them take warning therefrom. Let them know there is one God and let the men of understanding take heed. Quran says, let the men of understanding take heed. And Alhamdulillah, many of the Westerners, they are men of understanding. And they always like to question anything. Until they are convinced, they will not accept it. That's the reason if you read the Quran, the Quran is also a sort of a question answer book. No wonder if you read the Quran, it's mentioned, Kalu Dhefe. 332 times they say, they ask, and the Quran says 332 times, Qul, tell. It's a sort of a question answer book. For example, they ask the concerning wine and gambling, and the Quran gives the answer. They ask the concerning new moon, and the Quran says, Qul, it starts. It satisfies the intellectual of a person. And today, in most parts of the world, especially the West part of the world, you know, people are very busy. There are so many new philosophies and new things coming up that time doesn't permit us to analyze everything. The Westerners and the people around the world, they're very busy. So now if you bring up a new theory or a new hypothesis or a new philosophy, first they ask you that do you have any way to prove your theory wrong? Or do you have any way to prove your philosophy wrong? It's known as falsification test. The Westerners, they believe in the falsification test. Means any theory you bring forth, if you want us to analyze that theory, first show us the way how to prove your theory wrong. What will we do that will prove your theory wrong? Then we'll analyze it. Otherwise, there are thousands of things people are bringing up new things. Where do we have the time to analyze everything? If you have a way to prove your theory wrong, we will do that and prove it wrong. If you can't, then we'll agree with your theory. That's the reason Albert Einstein, when he propounded this theory of relativity, he had three ways. He said, to prove my theory wrong, do these three things, and theory will be proved wrong, and don't accept it. So for six years, they tested it out, and they agreed, and then, but natural, he got the Nobel Prize. Quran is the only religious book, and Islam is the only religion which has this falsification test. And 
I have discussed various falsification tests in my cassette, Is the Quran God's Word, which is available outside in the foyer. I'll just mention one of them, which mainly caters to the Western mind. The glorious Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 82, Afala is the Barun al Qurana, Walla Qana min indi garilla, Lavajudu fiq tilaf and kasira. That do they not consider the Quran with care? Do they not ponder over the Quran with care? Had it been from anyone besides Allah, there would have been many discrepancies, there would have been many contradictions in it. So if you want to prove the Quran wrong, you take out a single discrepancy. The Quran is proved wrong. If you want to say Quran is not a word of God, you take out a contradiction. Quran will be proved wrong. It is so easy. Just take out one mistake in the Quran and the Quran will be proved wrong. So easy. Just go through the book. It will take you a few hours or a couple of days. Take out the mistake and I'll agree the Quran is wrong. It is presenting a falsification test. Throughout the ages there are falsification tests given by the Quran. But for this age, this test is there. Which was applicable even that time, but today it's more applicable, you know, because today is the age of science and technology. Previously was the age of literature, poetry, etc. It had different falsification tests for that time, which is even applicable today. But this particular one is applicable for the Westerners. Not that Westerners didn't try. You have several critics of Islam giving hundreds of alleged contradictions, alleged scientific errors, all of which are actually nothing but falsehood. Because if you know more about science, as Francis Bacon said, that little knowledge of science makes you an atheist. But an in-depth knowledge of science makes you a believer in God. That's the reason today, the Western world, they are eliminating models of God, but they are not eliminating God. La ilaha illallah. As I mentioned, that Islam has the solutions to the problems of the West. Time doesn't permit us to discuss all the problems and solutions which Islam has. We'll just pick up a few and discuss a few of them. As I mentioned, that the Western world is drowned in materialism. It's a materialistic world. You know, more concern about trying to see the welfare of the body so much that they have been drowned in materialism. And Quran has a solution. Quran says in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 34 and 35, it says that spend of your wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give a warning to those people who bury gold and silver and spend it not in the way of Allah, those who hold their gold and silver, and spend it not in the way of Allah, announce to them a grievous penalty that fire will be produced from the wealth which they have hoarded. It will be heated in the hellfire and on the day of judgment they will be branded with it on the forehead, on the flanks and on the back. And the Quran says that this life is a test for the hereafter. In Surah Mulk, chapter 67, verse number 2, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. And the Quran says in Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse number 185, that Kullu every soul shall have a taste of death. The final recompense shall be paid on the day of judgment. And anyone who enters the garden, that is Jannah, and is kept away from the hellfire, he would have achieved the purpose of this life. For this life is but goods and chattels of deception. Quran says this life people are running after materialism. It's a goods of chattels and deception. But a person who is safe from the hellfire and enters the garden would have achieved the objectives of this life. People spend too much money, etc. And Quran has a solution for the spendthrifts. Quran says, in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 26 and 27, that spend not your wealth like that of a spendthrift. Well, do not be a spendthrift because spendthrifts are the brothers of the devil. That means if you spend excessively, you are a brother of the devil. And